In this video, the BBK headers finally get installed on our Crimson 5.7. Stay tuned. Welcome back and or to the channel. Today, we have to go through and I wanna show the process of how I got these BBK headers installed. Now, I did have some health concerns that came up, but due to the issues that I've had with my health, I've had to shift some videos around. I haven't been able to put any out for almost a month now. And I'll get into explaining that in the next video. But today I wanna to show how I got the BBK headers installed, how we're almost fully completed with the install. There's only one slight exhaust leak that we have to fix. We're gonna work on that. Uh, we may not get to it in this video, but we're going to show kind of what we need to do to fix that. What happened was when they put the stock manifold back on, they didn't loosen up the, pad, the driver's side, so it pinched the flange and caused a bad spot in that flange. Now in order to fix it, we're gonna have to pull both flanges apart again drop our white pipe down, slowly bend in that spot that's out, clamp everything back together and hopefully not have a bad exhaust leak. So that's the process that we're gonna go through. Before the end of this video, we will be doing a cold start on these BBKs. And I was impressed by the sound, but it didn't change too much in volume from what I already had. So if you're looking to add a lot of more sound to it, your shorties aren't gonna give you that. You'll get that more out of your long tube headers. You also get that out of more of a dual exhaust setup. But the way we were going, I wanna keep this thing as close to streetable and stockable as possible. I don't wanna get it to where the thing is just completely unusable. I mean, right now it's been sitting in here under repair and I don't like it because I wanna get out and drive it. So our goal is this spring to get this out and we have some more stuff coming for the channel that involve this needing to be done. I'm working with a few people. We'll see what happens, what we can get worked out. Hopefully I got some good stuff coming up for the channel. Some stuff that, direction that we may be taking it. And I will talk about that in the next few videos, where we're going, how we got to where we are, and what our future plans are for the channel. So let's get back underneath this thing. I wanna show you kind of where we're at. We're gonna take it side by side. That way you can see the driver's side and the passenger side, how we got them in and how we had to get at the bolts in order to get them in. So, let me get set up. Now, this is the passenger side that we're talking about right here. This is the one that went in. We were starting to get this one to drop into place in the last video. We were able to get it dropped in, get the gaskets put on it, and put our sealant on it. That sealant allows us to help seal up that gasket so we know that it doesn't leak. How we had to get at most of the bolts on this is the top bolts we were able to access from up top up here. The bottom ones we had to lay on a creeper underneath the truck. And we had to roll in and reach our arms all the way up underneath to get at these bolts. And these were probably some of the worst bolts that I've ever had to access in my life. Because the pipes themselves are just so tight. A lot of them you have to put in by finger tight only because you have to snake your hand in to twist the bolts in until they're bottomed out. So I would suggest anyone that wants to do BBK headers or any shorty headers, it doesn't matter the brand, you might wanna chase your threads with a proper thread tap so that your bolts will thread in loosely by hand almost all the way to the bottom. And that'll save you a bunch of time when you're trying to put a wrench in there that you may only get an eighth of a turn off that wrench before you're out of space to tighten and then you either have to flip the wrench or you have to try to re-click it if it's an automatic clicking wrench. But a lot of these went in fairly decent. Like I said, there were two that were just an absolute bear. Um, the one that goes right underneath here around that curled pipe, there's one bolt that sits behind there. There was another one right behind the main collector here. That one was a real bear to get at. Uh, up front here, we were able to access both of those bottom ones from underneath with a wrench. And it went in pretty simple that way. The tops obviously were fairly easy with just a normal wrench. We were able to get them in. Now back here on the collector, this is where I said we have some problems. Because our collector 
has a gap right up along this top edge that's not sealing tight. And we've tried to do a few different things to get this to seal up. The only thing that we can think of now is that we're going to have to take this loose with a friend of mine. Um, take this all apart, bend the top part of that flange in to bend that bell so that it goes back into place. If we do it wrong, we're going to wreck that bell and then the bell is no longer good. If we do it right, we're able to save the bell and reseal this header without having any other issues with the sealing. Now, if the exhaust leak isn't that bad, we may choose to just leave it and run it the way it is. If it gets to be too annoying, I'm probably going to have to drop it or probably put a new Y pipe in, which then at that point, I'm going to kind of regret not going with long tube headers. But hopefully we can uh, get this little problem fixed that we have right here. Once we get that done, we're good to go. So let's slide around to the other side here. All right, this side posed similar challenges. The only thing that I'm having concerns about on this side is that this top pipe gets really, really, really close to this valve cover. I don't know if I'll be able to get it in a shot very well, but right there, you should be able to see it mid-screen. You've got, uh, obviously, this gets really close. I mean, I can't even get my finger in between there. That's how close it is. We were able to push this sleeve up so that the rubber wasn't that close to there. I can get my hand behind it pretty good. And all this was was just a, a simple uh, tapered shaft for the steering column. So it really didn't have a need to be on there. It's not going to make that big of an impact as far as how the vehicle's gonna run or drive. But this side had its own challenges with the collector. When we went to put this side in, the collector pipe had basically become such a pain to get at and the stock bolts did not work. What I wound up having to do was go get parts or bolts from a hardware store and I had to put the bolts in by hand, barely got the bottom one threaded without cross threading. Let's see if I can reach into the screen here and show you. But this one here barely started. It's currently out to the end of the threads, but that's as far as it went. Now I did use metal locking nuts. I did not use a nylon lock nut because the nylon will melt. But we got this side to seal up very well. This one went in straight, the collector went in straight, Everything made it up. The bell made it with the surface. We got the top and bottom bolts in. Like I said, the only thing is, is we couldn't use the stock bolts on this one. The stock bolts just wouldn't allow us to get that collector on there. We couldn't get our pieces put together, and we couldn't get the collar slid back up into place. So we opted to just use some normal bolts with locking metal lock nuts. And it'll work really good for what we're doing. I won't have too many issues with that going forward in the future. It's probably the best way to do it if you're not using all the stock hardware. Is to make sure that you use metal lock stuff. That way it's not going to come loose unless you want it to come loose. And as long as you've got the bolts right, you won't have to worry about tearing or bending or pulling a pipe apart. But you got to make sure that you get these tight. If these collectors are not tight, you're going to have air leaks and you're going to throw check engine lights. So it's got to be in there, it's got to be straight, and it's got to be tight. When we went to put the bolts in on the bottom of this one, this was an absolute nightmare because the bottom three all the way across the bottom were so hard to get to that we literally had to reach up with our fingers like this and twist the bolt like this in order to get it to go in. That was the only way we could do those bottom three. It was so tight in there, there was just no room to work. And looking at what they've done here, the only regret that I have is I wish that they would have brought this pipe over just a little bit farther to the steering column, knowing that this isn't as crucial if it gets warm as that valve cover. That valve cover is going to be a concern in the future and I'm gonna have to keep an eye on it. But that was basically how we went about getting them in. Now, when we dropped them in, I showed you at the end of the last video kind of how to drop in the other header. The header had dropped in up over the top like this, folded level with the motor, and then dropped straight in. On this side, it was different. This side, we had to come 
from all the way underneath the truck and feed that manifold or that header all the way up in there. And we had to fight at an angle to slide it up into place. And that's how it went up in. It was, it was really kind of a bear. There was only one spot where we had put our gasket sealer that our gasket sealer had rubbed off. You can kind of see it right there where we had to kind of touch it up. But it was the simplest way to get it in there without having to take anything really apart. We didn't even have to take our steering column apart. We just had to make sure that our Y-pipe was loose enough that we could slide our Y-pipe around and get it put into place. Once it was in place, the rest was simple. We had no other complications from there. So where I'm at now with this is I want to get this thing, get a cold start here for you. You can see exactly what I talk about when I say it didn't add a whole lot of tone or volume to it, but it did make some, some, some significant changes. Uh, that'll probably wrap it up for this video. So this cold start's probably gonna be the end of it here. But like I said, in the next few videos, I got a lot coming up that explain kind of where I've been problems that I've been having, you probably hear it in my voice, kind of what's been going on. It pertains to stuff that I've been dealing with. If I get a chance, I'm gonna go ahead and link um, the last video down below uh, as far as us taking the headers apart. And if I get a chance somewhere in this video, probably closer to the beginning, I'm gonna go ahead and link down below um, one of the videos that I talked about a health concern that I had two, three months ago. Uh, that issue crept up pretty bad. I wound up having to have surgery on it. So let's go ahead and get this cold start going. thank you for watching. Please hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one.